Good afternoon. Here is the modified Excel template. Now in this video, I'm going to highlight the new functionality that is the rental income tracking functionality. So on the screen, I've opened up the template and it's titled with your business name. Now the first new modification you will notice is on the navigation pane. We now have a new button labeled rental. So recall that in the standard version you watched on YouTube, we had only the dashboard customers and these are the buttons, but now we've added a new button, which takes you to the new section that we just added to this template. So once you click on the rental button, it takes you to the section that's currently displayed on the screen where you document all of your product information. Now by product, we mean all the equipments that you rent out. So any item that you rent out, you document it here. Now other sections work like before. So the dashboard takes you to the dashboard section, customers to the customer section. In the customer section, I already pre-populated it with two customers that I'm going to use for this demonstration and other sections work like before. The only new functionality now is the ability to track your rental income. Now, once you go to the rental section, this is where you document all of your products. So to the right, we have three buttons to add a new product, to delete an existing product, and to add rental details. So whenever you rent a product out, you click on this button and document the details there. This is just where you list all the products in your inventory. Now to add a new product, simply click on the first blank field and you supply the product name. So let's assume my first product is white plastic chairs. Now, once you enter the product name, you make use of your tab key to move to the next field where you indicate the price you rent each unit of this product. So how much do you rent each plastic chair to your customer? So let's assume we rent it for 300 Naira each. And next, you indicate the quantity you have of this in your warehouse. That's the entire quantity. What you have plus what you've rented out, the total units of white plastic chairs that your business owns as at today. So you enter the units there. Let's assume we have 500 units. And once you do, the template will automatically calculate the total you have for rent. So since we haven't rented any units out, we indicated we have 500. So that's why the available for rent is 500. Later on, when we add rental details, you notice that this number is going to reduce whenever we rent products out and it's going to increase back whenever we receive the products back. So now I've successfully added my first product. I've indicated that I have plastic white chairs. I rent them for 300 Naira and I have 500 units in my business. To add a new product, you repeat the process. You click the add new button. It inserts a blank new row. You indicate the product name. So I'm going to call this blue medium canopy. You make use of your tab key. You indicate the price. That's how much do you rent each unit. That's each canopy. Let's assume we rent it for 10,000 Naira. And next you indicate the quantity you have of blue canopies in your business. So the quantity that your business owns. So let's assume that we have five canopies. The template will tell us that we currently have five also for rent. So that's how you add products to this section. You click the add new button. It inserts a blank new row. You supply the three attributes, the product name, the rent and price, and the total units you own as a business. To delete a particular product, you simply click on the first cell. So you notice the first cell is clicked. You click on delete. The confirmation screen comes up. You click on yes, and it's going to delete that row. So now we've successfully added two equipments or two products to our product section. And that's pretty much a summary of how you use this section. The last functionality is how you add rental details. And to do that, you simply click on the add rental button at the top. Once you do, it takes you to that section of the template. So you notice the section has the same formatting in the upper left hand corner. We have the section title that tells you this is where you document all rental information. To the right of this, we have two buttons to add a new rental, to delete an existing rental. Above, we have the navigation pane or the new navigation pane with the new button. The rental button and below this we have the data table where all the rental history is going to be displayed now to add a new rental is the same process simply click on the first plank field and indicate the day so this is the day you're making the rental to the customer so let's assume today which is the 22nd of march so we enter the day a forward slash the month a forward slash the year so this is the format in which you enter the dates it's the day a forward slash the month a forward slash the year once you're done entering the dates you make it with your tab key and next, you indicate the customer. Now, recall earlier on, I showed that in the customer section, I already pre-populated it with two customers. So that's why in the rental section, if I click on the drop-down list, we can see two customers. So this works with the customer section. So once you indicate the customer that you're renting the products to, next, you indicate the product you're renting. This is a call a drop-down list, and it's going to list all products in your database. So we currently have only two products. Once I click the first product, the template will automatically pull the renting price as I indicated in the rental section. So recall, I indicated 300 Naira. 
The same way, if I choose blue medium canopy, the template will automatically return the rental price for each unit of this product. Now this field is editable. In the event you offer discounts, you can always change this price to a lower value. Or if you, you know, have a high valued customer, you want to inflate the price, you can equally do the same. The template will just return the default price as you specified here, but you can always modify the value. Now, once you're done entering the rental price, make it to the tab key and you indicate the units of canopies that this customer is renting on this day. So let's assume this customer wants only two canopies. And once I move away from that field, the template will automatically multiply the two and obtain the total price, which in this case is 20,000. And lastly, the template will also fill the last column. Now, the last column is where you indicate when this product leaves your store and when the product returns. So you notice the title says returned. So pretty much you answer the question, has this product been returned? By default, it's going to be no, because we're just renting this out today. So no means that your balance is going to reduce by two. So there are two options here, it's either no or yes. So when the customer eventually returns the product, you change it to yes, and the template will automatically increase it back. So notice now it's a no. So if we go to the rental section, we should have two less units of canopies. So you notice that our canopies tell us that we have five in total as a business, but we have only three available for rent because we've given out two to the customer, I think, Rose Random. So Rose Random collected two on this particular day. So that's what this column does. It determines your inventory balance. So no, which is the default value once you enter the quantity, means that this has not been returned by Rose Random. To add another rental, you simply click the new rental button. It inserts a blank new row and you repeat the process. You enter the date. Next, you indicate the customer that's renting the product, the product that's being rented, for instance, white plastic chairs. The template returns the unit price, 300. You enter the units the customer is renting, for instance, 100. The template calculates the total price, multiplying the two together, which is 30,000, and automatically enters no here, indicating this product has not been returned. So now if we go back to the rental section, we should have 100 units less of our white plastic chairs. So let's confirm that. So you notice that we have a total of 500, but we have only 400 available for rent. So this column will always tell you what you have available for rent at any point in time. So that's how you document rentals. You simply fill all the attributes and the template will automatically calculate the total price and enter returned here. Now, when you eventually return the product back from the customer, all you simply need to do is to change this from no. So you notice no means is highlighted automatically in red, meaning this is out of your inventory. But if I change this to yes, you notice it's in green telling you this has come back in. So green means that this product has been returned by the customer. So now if we go back to our rental, our canopy should have increased back to five units. So you notice five available for rent. So that's how the template works. Whenever you rent it out, you indicate no. Whenever it returns back to you, you simply change this to yes. And if you go back, you notice your balance has increased back to 500. So that's how user-friendly the template is. In the product information section, you document all the products you have. In the rental section, you document each rental. So I can click the add new. I can enter a date, today's date. Let's assume that John equally wants to rent canopies. So I simply select John. Next, I indicate the product canopies. The template returns the unit price. I enter the units of canopies he wants to rent, for instance, four. The template calculates the total and enters no for me automatically meaning that now we should have four less canopies. So notice now we have only one canopy available for rent. In the same way, whenever John returns it back, I simply change this from no to yes, and it will automatically update the balance to five. So that's how this section works. It enables you know at any point in time the total units you have available for rent, and also you have a section whereby you can see the history of your rental information. Now the last functionality that has been added is in the report section, your profit and loss statement has been updated to equally tell you your rental services income. So once you click the refresh button, this will generate from March 2018. It tells us that we've earned 90,000 rental services income. And how did we rent that? How did we earn that, excuse me? In the rental section, recall that we have two, three rentals. The sum of this together, 20 plus 30 plus 40, gives you 90,000. So the template will automatically sum data from the rental section to obtain the total amount you earn every month. So all of this is in March 2018. The same way in the profit and loss statement, if I change this to annual and I refresh, you notice that that data is going to be under March. There we go. Because it's only in March that we have income received. 
Now recall as demonstrated in the standard video that the PL statement tells you what you earned, not cash that you've received. So you've earned 90,000, but you've actually not received any physical cash from the customer. When the customer pays you, you simply need to go to the customer section and document that as income received. So that's very important. You need to document it in the income information section whenever you receive income from customers. But the profit and loss statement will always tell you at any point in time what you've earned, which is the most important data because you will receive this money eventually. But whenever the customer pays, maybe after the service has been rendered, then you go back to the report section, the customer section, and then you add the income as income received. And once you do, it's now going to be reflected in the income report. So that's a summary of the new functionality. Thanks again for the order and do take care.